Hey there Mazda owners. I recently did a bit of a tune-up on my 2006 Mazda 6 with the V6 engine in it and I wanted to share some of the high points of it uh, in the hopes that if you're planning on doing a tune-up of your own uh, that some of the information might help you. I think one piece of information uh, in particular is certainly going to help you. So uh, what I did recently was uh, well, first of all, I, I bought this car with 58,000 miles on it a couple, of, a little bit less than two years ago, and now it's got 85,000 on it, so it needed to tune up uh, plugs and gaskets and stuff like that, uh, belt and so forth, because I'm assuming that, based on what I see, that it's uh, all original parts. So it uh, was certainly time. And then along the way, I noticed that there were a few leaks cropping up. Some of them are you know, pretty typical to these a three liter engine so I, I wasn't surprised to see them. So I did a belt a tensioner and an idler. I did spark plugs, a coolant tee, a water pump belt, a intake or plenum gasket, a get plenum gaskets as well as valve cover gaskets and the uh, oil control valve seals. So I'll show you what I did and just talk a little bit about it along the way. And as I'm going through it, what I will ultimately be pointing to uh, will be four links that I've posted down in the description that I think will be the most helpful. So, you know, after I've talked about what I've done, you can, you know, go to those links and see for yourself, uh, you know, why I chose to do some of the things and, uh, you know, where I got some of the parts. So here we go. So down below you can see the... Uh, tensioner. Um, if you look over here on the left, right down there, you'll see that bolt. Uh, it is possible to get a full-sized breaker bar sized uh, half-inch drive flex head ratchet uh, on that tensioner to you know take the tension off of it. I just you know slid it right in there and there was a bit of a struggle around that bolt, but if you take that bolt out, uh, that bolt right there. You won't have any problems getting a half-inch ratchet in there uh, to take the tension off of that belt and to get it out. Uh, there's also a tensioner, or actually there's an idler uh, down here, just about underneath the cylinder head uh, that you may want to change to. You can't really see it, and I actually didn't even know it was there uh, until uh, I actually noticed the part for it online. Uh, some people say that getting the belt off or getting the belt on by yourself is a challenge, but I got a little bit creative and I was able to get it on uh, by myself without uh, very much trouble at all. <clears throat> These uh, are your oil control valves, one on each bank, and uh, they're also, I guess, possibly called VVT actuators. Uh, they go by both names, but uh, the service manual refers to them as oil control valves. And if you look closely, you can see that there's a seal uh, set down inside the valve cover. And these seals are known to crack and rot and leak, as you can see. I still have some cleaning up to do, but uh, they make actually quite a mess uh, when they, when they uh, deteriorate. This one was in fact you know, cracked in half and was leaking pretty badly. Uh, believe it or not, Mazda does not sell these seals separately. They only sell the entire valve cover. And each one of these valve covers is about 150, 160 bucks if my memory serves me correct. Uh, so it was actually quite a challenge to find the seals because nobody makes them. And I couldn't even cross reference it with a Ford part number, but. I may put a little bit of effort into that. So anyway, um, I was able to find a source for these seals and I put that link in the description. I paid about 20 bucks for both of them and uh, getting them in and out is pretty easy. Uh, I just knocked them out from the inside of the valve cover and, uh, and then pressed them back in from the top down 
and you know, it was just a it was a pretty easy job and uh, these are sealed up very nicely so if you buy from this guy that I've linked to uh, you're gonna get uh, a good part that will keep you oil leak free for a while I did uh, front and rear valve cover gaskets uh, the front uh, gasket wasn't too bad the biggest problem uh, that you're going to have is clearing the oil control valve and getting past the dipstick. You may have to loosen up your dipstick, although I just pulled pulled it forward a little bit carefully, you know, without uh, having to worry about breaking it. But you may want to loosen yours up to make it easier. Believe it or not, these damn oil control valves really get in the way when it's time to get these valve covers off. You'd be surprised. I also. Uh, changed uh, along with the valve cover gaskets I, I changed the oil uh, well or the spark plug well seals they came with the valve cover gasket set that I got and probably about four out of six of the spark plug wells had some oil in them so the timing was just right for that one of the biggest pains of this entire uh, you know tune-up that I did was getting that rear bank valve cover out and it wasn't because of anything that was in the way on the top, although the EGR valve uh, tube does get in the way. Uh, the biggest problem getting this valve cover off is that thing right there, the oil control valve on the back bank. Uh, you, again, you wouldn't think of it, but you cannot lift the valve cover up high enough to get it past the electrical connector on the top of the oil control valve these AC lines simply don't move and there isn't enough clearance on the back of the firewall to wiggle that valve cover out past that oil control valve. The only way that you can do it is by lowering the engine by loosening this motor mount. I took all I took these two bolts out and loosened up this third bolt and then you know lowered the engine down and then just had it you know, hanging by the th the end of the threads here, uh, and then I was able to get about an extra inch of clearance uh, to wiggle that valve cover out. I guess if you took the bolts, all the bolts completely out and supported the engine, you could get even more clearance, but you do have to be careful. And then even with that extra clearance, I still had to struggle, as you can see, uh, to get that damn back valve cover off. It was... It was kind of frustrating, but you have to be very careful because if you force it, you'll break the electrical connector, uh, this part right here, off the top of that oil control valve, and that'll make you even uh, madder than you already are trying to get that valve cover off. Uh, I changed the valve covers because uh, they were leaking down here. Uh, they were leaking in the holes here where the bolts go course I needed to change the oil control valves and there was also some leaks back here on this bank. The uh, back bank uh, wasn't leaking too bad but it also had you know leaks here and leaks in the spark plug wells. <clears throat> originally I thought that I was going to have a problem or originally I thought I had a problem with leaks from the seal here that goes on the exhaust camshaft and uh, that seal is there because this pulley drives the water pump as you can see down there uh, but it turns out that it was the valve cover that was leaking you can see a lot of the oil down there from the leak but it turns out that it was the valve cover leaking uh, down here in the very corner so even though I bought the uh, seal for the camshaft and was planning to take this pulley off which is a royal pain in the butt uh, now I was happy to see that I didn't have to do that and I just had to you know change that changing that valve cover gasket would take care of that change the uh, water pump belt here as well regarding the valve covers one other thing you'll find is that this tube that goes to your uh, intake boot here uh, it comes off very easily here but it doesn't I, I couldn't get it disconnected here and I figured if I forced it uh, it was going to break and on the other side of this valve cover is a there's a cover and I didn't want to take that cover off so I just took this off with the valve cover when I took it off and uh, it did
didn't really get in the way too much. Uh, part of the whole job is to take off the plenum here. This is actually called the plenum and not your intake manifold. I think that the intake manifolds are about that tall and they go between the plenum and the uh, engine block and they have a gasket on the bottom as well as the plenum gaskets on the top. Uh, so I replaced the plenum gaskets while I was in there and I'm glad I did because they were pretty well flattened out. The plenum isn't uh, too bad to get off. It's held by eight bolts and once you get the eight bolts out um, you then have to take off the lines on the back of the plenum. Uh, there are actually four lines. You can only see three here but there's another one hidden right down there. I think that's it. Uh, let's see if I can get it focused. Yeah, I, I think that's the one. It's, no, that's not it. Anyway, there's another line back there uh, that you have to get off and uh, it has a clamp like this on it so you have to be prepared to get your needle nose pliers in there to get it off and then you have to take the EGR valve off. The EGR valve isn't too bad to get off. I took off this bracket here and then just pulled the plenum away from the EGR valve and that probably wasn't the best way to do it. This EGR valve has a tube that runs all the way out into the plenum, probably about to here. It's really long and that makes it uh, more difficult to get the plenum out. And more importantly, it's one more thing that's really in the way when you try to get that back bank valve cover off. And you definitely don't want to have anything else in the way uh, when you're doing that. So if I were to do this again, I would disconnect the EGR valve from the bracket and then leave that tube inside the plenum and I think that that will make it uh, a much easier job uh, to get this plenum off if you deal with the EGR valve that way. If you've been a Mazda owner for long you know that these coolant tees are a constant problem in that they uh, break and deteriorate. If you ever take off your throttle body, which I did of course when I took the plenum off, uh, you're going to be moving the coolant lines that run from the, here's one of the lines right here, that runs to the throttle body. And as soon as you move one of those coolant lines, you're going to break this T down here. So this is the line that goes to the um, throttle body. And I didn't even touch this. Just by pulling the throttle body away from the plenum, that thing snapped instantly. So again, this is the coolant T. I kind of anticipated that, so I had one in my garage uh, ready to change out. But if you're going to be moving your throttle body, you may want to have one of these on hand. Also, I wanted to mention that I never use the worm drive clamps that come with these replacement parts. I always put the factory style spring clamps back on because they're just far superior uh, to those garbage uh, worm drive clamps. One other thing that I did that I thought was really important was when I had both bank valve covers off, I went in and I che checked the torque on the cam cap bolts. Uh, Brian, uh, otherwise known as Ford Tech Make You Loco, has a video out on the 3 liter Duratec engines and he says that one of the problems that he has seen on these engines is that the cam cap bolts can come loose and it can cause really weird problems like misfires, odd noises, uh, you know, running funny and of course it can even uh, cause engine damage. And he said it happens really slowly and it's really hard to uh, you know, to, to figure out that that's your problem. So he's in the habit of checking the cam cap bolt torque every time he has the valve covers off and he says that uh, that's a great way to avoid any uh, you know, long-term problems with these otherwise very reliable Duratec engines. So, so I, at the beginning of the video I showed you some photos of what I ran into. I didn't think it was necessary to video everything because if you're going to undertake a job like this you, you probably are more than capable of doing it. Uh, but I hope those photos give you an idea of uh, 
you know what you're up against and hopefully some of the information will help you uh, I also as I said before have posted some links in the description I think one of the most important ones is where to get those lousy oil control valve seals and uh, that certainly will be a big help to you I did want to mention that I got a quote from the Mazda dealer for this and this is about a thousand dollar job uh, if you didn't know that you could buy those oil control valve seals then you'd have to replace those valve cover gaskets and that adds about another 300 bucks to the job so uh, I would say that this is probably over a thousand dollar job to have done by the Mazda dealer and I did it in I don't know maybe five or six hours because I, I work pretty slowly but you could probably do it faster if you you know were that kind of worker so it's a it's it's big savings and uh, you know I'm, I'm glad I did it I was putting it off for quite a while but uh, now it's done and you know, cars are running great I uh, had the opportunity to put my scan tool on it there's no codes the fuel trims are essentially zero on both banks so I know that uh, I not only don't have any vacuum leaks but I remember to put all the connectors back on so that's a big relief um, so all in all not a bad job I think you can certainly do it yourself. Uh, just get everything that you need, do a little bit of research, and, and get to it. So, you know, I hope this information has helped you. If you're going to undertake the job, I wish you the best of luck. And as always, thanks for watching.